You mean I did number three on the board and it's still up there? Strike! One! No, I didn't do number three. Five was just plugging each other. Yeah, basically. Why, was five on the board? Yeah. Didn't we talk about that? Oh boy. Again, you guys are in trouble. Okay, one D. Now, in order to factor 1D, you, I mean to graph it, you need to factor it. But I give you a hint, 1 is a triple root. So, when you do synthetic division, 1, negative 2, 0, 2, do you guys remember to put the 0? Mm -hmm. That means you can do synthetic division with 1 3 times, because it's going to work 3 times, because 1 is a triple root. So, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0. And then you can do it again with one. One, one, zero, zero. Negative one, negative one, zero. And then what the heck? Do it one more time. One, 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 zero. Oh, that's what that meant. Triple root. Oh no, I thought it meant like one of the factors is a triple root. Like, yeah, exactly. By, yeah. Well, not really exactly. But. Y equals, so you got 1, 1, and 1, that means this is x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1. Doesn't that mean x minus 1 cubed? And what does that stand for? x plus 1. x plus 1, and then now it's in factor form. Now it's like all the other problems. So, would you like me to graph it? No. Too late, I'm doing it. x intercepts negative 1 and 1, y intercept negative 1, and we got a fourth degree polynomial leading coefficient positive, so we got this. Flattens out that, that exit go on cute because you got a third power out of it. And then number three, the graph labeling all the points of intersection. Okay, now when you graph, should I graph first? When I do this problem, should I graph first or should I find the points of intersection first? What should I do? What should I do? Yeah, find the points of intersection first because then you can use those points to help you graph, right? I never thought of it. Okay, so how do you solve, how do you find where two graphs intersect? It's called substitution. You can substitute that for y right there, so you get x cubed minus 4x equal negative 3x. How do you solve an equation when the, when the power is 2 or bigger? Make one side 0, so you get x cubed minus x. And then you factor. Now, this one you don't need synthetic division to factor. Because look, it just So x equals 0, negative 1, or 1. But we have to find points of intersection. So you, that means you have to give coordinates. We just figured out the x coordinates. How do you figure out the y coordinates? Plug it back into either this one or this one. Which one seems easier to plug into? No or yes? Yes. A or B? B. B. So y is negative 3 times the x coordinate. So just multiply that by negative 3, multiply that by negative 3, multiply that by negative 3. There you go. Those are your three points of intersection. Now you can use these points to help you draw the graph. Although we really don't really need them because we're experts. Yeah? Negative 1, 3, 1, negative 3. These are my points of intersection. Now, when you graph this, that's just a line. Come on, people. Right? If you cannot graph a line, just go home and cook rice. Don't even, don't even cook rice. Just go home. <laughs> what about this, though? How do you graph this? This is a polynomial. That's what we're learning. Factor. You factor it. So you take out an x, and you get x squared minus 4. And then you can factor that, because that's a difference of squares. And ooh, the x-intercepts are? 2, negative 2. 0, negative 2, and 2, and the y-intercept is 0, and that's a cubic polynomial, leading coefficient positive, so it's going to look like this. So just make sure you go through all the points. So. <coughs> anyway, like, I don't know if I told you this, but this is what we do in calculus. Compute the area of that region. Compute the perimeter of that region. 
find the volume of the solid if you take this region and revolve it around the y-axis. In fact, can you even imagine that? If I take this region and revolve it about the y-axis, what, what is that? Yeah, it's going to be like a cone, like that. But the inside part is like padded, yeah? Anyway, so what is the volume of that thing? Well, that's what we do in calculus, figure it out. And you know what the hardest part of the problem is? Drawing the picture, drawing the graph. Calculus is easy. It's the pre-calculus stuff that the students always get tripped up on. I, I, don't, I don't know how to factor. Uh, I forgot my trigonometry. I, I forgot how to work with logarithms. That's the problem in calculus. Calculus is actually quite simple. Okay, next, number four. Are you serial? How about draw, did you guys draw a picture? Oh. Great. That's the number one thing you were taught since pre-algebra, right? Draw a diagram. Oh, no, 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 you do it the hard way. Go ahead. That's good fun. One, two, three. It passes through this point and this point, 1, 4, and is tangent to the x-axis at the origin. So tangent. So doesn't that mean the graph has to look like this? Right, because it's got to be tangent to the x-axis at the origin. In other words, it's going to bounce off. Okay. And it's a cubic function. Oh, come on. This is an insult to your loins, this problem. OK, look, what are the x-intercepts? Zero. Zero and? So shouldn't you have x and x minus 3? But since it bounces off there, it's squared. The only thing we don't know is we don't know what the number in the front is. And we know, is the, is the number in the front going to be a positive or a negative number? It's negative because the end behavior is like this, right? Yeah, but how do you know it's negative 1? It could be negative 2 or negative half. We don't know. How did we figure this out in the other problems that we did? You plug in a point that you know. What's a point that we know? Right down yonder, right there, 1 comma 4. So plug in 4 for x and 1 for y, except it's the other way around. Plug in 1 for x and 4 for y. So 4 equal a times 1 times negative 2. Therefore, a is? Two. What? Negative, negative two. 2. So just put negative 2 right there. Box that. That's the answer. Yes. See how easy it was when you draw the picture? And number 5. How come the 5 was up there? How do you solve any equation on your calculator? You make one side 0. You graph it. And then you see where it crosses the x-axis. The x-intercepts are your answers. You guys got to practice getting good at that. Did anybody do it on the on the pocket caps on the iPad just for fun? I'm afraid to even ask. Did anybody even do these problems? I know, but just for funsies. <laughs> okay, we're doing number six. How come this is just like an algebra one problem right here? This is algebra one right here. A box has a, okay, here's a box. I'm not going to even draw it to scale. It has a length of 4, a width of 2, and a height of 1. What is the volume of this box? Rhymes with mate. 8. 8. Okay, but now, each dimension of the box is augmented by x. What does augmented mean? To make bigger. So each dimension is augmented by x. So this is 4 plus x, 2 plus x, 1 plus x. What, what, was that hard to understand? Augmented by x. What if I said increased by x then? Would, would that be better? Yeah. Too bad. That's a word you should know. Isn't that on your SAT list? Augment. How many of you take music? So you guys know augment, right? Only two people play music? Nobody else played music before? Orchestra, band, piano, I used to. harp, nose yes. flute? Yes. Okay, let me teach you something about music here. You think you had right? I got too many. Okay, I don't really know about music. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Okay. 
So like in a C chord, a C major chord consists of C, E, and G, right? Yeah. You guys know a C major? <coughs> As opposed to C minor? Yeah, da, da, da. Anyway, if you, you ever, okay, so this is a C major chord. You guys know what a C augmented is? You sharp the fifth. Make it bigger. Augment. You never heard of C augment or any chord augmented? Who plays piano? Then you heard of it, right? See? <laughs> okay, here we go. All the, all the critics are coming out now. Are you sure? Yeah, because you have to if you, you play the piano, you have to know it's sharp before you play the note. We'll just look after it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when I play piano, I don't, I, 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 I can't look at the music when I play. I look at the chords. That's how I play. You know, in popular music, they have the chords at the top. That's how I play piano. I just look at this. So if you know all your chords, then just, uh, I know my chords. I can play. Anyway, can we finish this problem now? I'm just teaching you what augmented means. To make bigger. And then on the other hand, since we're talking about music, here is a C major chord. What if you flat, I guess put it in the front, the third and the fifth, you know what we call that? Yeah. A diminished chord. Because diminished means to make smaller. Okay, that's your music lesson for today. Sure. Okay, now let's... Okay, so if you augment each dimension by x, the volume of the box gets doubled. So what equation can I write? If by doing this, the volume gets doubled, what equation can I write? Length times width times height will be equal to 16. 16. The volume gets doubled. <coughs> can you solve any equation? And you're allowed to use a calculator on this problem. You know how you can tell? Star. There's a double asterisk, and then if you look at the answer, you're like, that's most two. That's how you tell. Okay, how do you solve any equation in your calculator? Just for that, just for that. The probability that this problem is on tomorrow's quiz just went up to 0.95. You make one side zero, so this is what you graph on your calculator. Like that. Graph that on your calculator. Wherever it crosses the x-axis, that's the answer. And how many times did it cross? Only once? Yeah, but Mr. Park, you just said that if the power is, if you have a polynomial equation of degree three, there will be three solutions. How come only go one then? So you're telling me the graph just looks like this? I don't, I don't, what does oh, the graph look like? Something like that? Because you subtract 16, so you drop it. But it doesn't matter, it's still a cubic equation. A cubic equation of degree three should have three roots. But then, if it only crossed the x-axis once, it's only one. What about the other two? Somebody come up with something. Imaginary. Yeah, the other two are imaginary. Complex, A plus BI. Okay, enough of that. Just for that, this, the probability of this problem being on tomorrow's quiz just went up to 0 0.975. What was that, Marisana? Doesn't have to be on the quiz though. But the probability, um, well, if I say the probability is 0 0.1 or 0 0.03, then compared to 0 0.975, just for that it went up to 0.98. Come on, you gotta admit, that's just, come on. <laughs> I shake my head. You know, at least you got a music lesson today. Okay, now tonight's homework, if you look at it, you have eight word problems. <laughs> now, last chapter, remember when we did the word problems? All the functions were quadratic functions. Remember that? You know why? Because we were studying quadratic functions. Well, so, what do you think these are going to come up to today? Cubic. They're all going to be cubic. Okay, I tell you, since this is homecoming week, I will do three or four for you. So, you get, whatever we do on the board, you don't have to do for homework. So we've got to do the same three for all classes. So since you're the first one, you pick them. Eight. No, 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 Moose Breath. You don't just pick the, oh, so five, six, seven, eight then. 
Oh, no. no. Don't you want to do the harder ones? Because that's the ones that are probably going to be on the test, right? You know what happens when you just copy off the board? What happens on the test? Yeah. Pain! That's what happens. Yeah, okay, then why don't we just do odd or even then? How about that? Okay, odd or even. Odd. Uh, okay. uh, you guys kind of need to come up with odd. 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 Okay, I will do the odd problem. Number one, but we gotta, we need time to watch a video today. Okay, you have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. That's just your basic sheet of paper. Now, these problems, these are all classic problems. Look, you look at any Algebra 2 pre-calculus or calculus book, these are all in there. You're gonna do these same problems next year in calculus, except you're gonna use calculus to, to solve them. We're just using pre-calculus. I am going to cut squares from the corners. Except I don't know how big, big a square, okay? Okay, so let's call that x. I'm going to cut squares whose sides are x. Okay, so these are going to be gone, disappear, no more. Okay? Then I'm going to fold up the flaps. You guys, you guys got you to think three-dimensionally. So what you have left is just this part here. I fold up the flaps, what do I get? A box. You get a box, an open top box, right? So let me see if I can draw it. Let's kind of like this, right? Right? You fold up the flaps. Okay? So what does it say? How big a square should be cut from the corners so that the volume of the box will be as large as possible? Because there's lots of ways. Well, what if you cut just a tiny square like this from each corner? What is the box going to look like? And you fold up the flaps. It's going to be like really shallow, like a cookie pan, right? You know what I'm talking about? But what if you cut big squares away like this? Hooga booga, booga booga, booga booga, booga booga. Then the box is going to be narrow and kind of thin, right? It's not going to really have that much volume. So the question is, how much should I cut away so that the volume will be as large as possible? I'm pretty, I don't know, if you, I, pretty, I don't know if you guys did this last year. So what do, we, what do we need to do? We need to write the volume of the box, because that's what we're trying to maximize as a function of just one variable so we can graph it on our calculator. See, because when we graph it on our calculator, oh, there's a hump there and we can calculate the maximum, right? We know how to calculate maximum, right? I showed you yesterday. Okay, so this is the hardest part of the problem, is actually writing a function. Now look at this picture. How can I get the volume of this box? Length, length times width times height, right? Here's the length right here. Remember, this box is 8.5 by 11. So if this is 11, and I take away x and an x, what's this? 11 minus 2x, that's the length. Here's the width of the box, what is that? 8.5 minus 2x. And then what's the height of the box when I fold up the flaps? X. 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 There you go. That's why it's number one, because it was easy. Okay, now. Yeah. Because yeah, how else are you going to find a maximum of a cubic function, right? You're going to have to use your calculator. But when you punch this in on your calculator, do not just press the graph button. This is probably the most important part of the problem. What is the domain of this problem? X, remember, is a length, right? Zero. So zero. zero, x has to be bigger than zero, because and it has to be smaller than eleven. Come on, come on, six. Come on, four point two five. Huh. Somebody tell me. Look at this picture. How come x cannot be bigger than four point two five? Because look, the biggest you can cut away. Look, this is eight point five. Four point two five is half of that. In fact, if you cut away four point two five, you got nothing. The volume is going to be zero, right? So this is the domain of the problem. This is the only values of x where the problem makes sense. So practice now. Punch this in on your calculator. x min should be zero. x max should be 4.25. Because all the other values of x don't make sense in this problem. So that means don't, do not press the graph button. Press the window button. Set the window. Now, what about y min and y max, though? 
Because this is what you want to see on your screen right here. You want to see the hump like that so you can calculate the max. So what do you think we're going to set? What, what, what does y represent anyway, by the way? I'm pointing to it. Volume. The volume. You think the volume can be negative? No. No. So you make y min 0 because you kind of have negative volume. And now this is where you kind of have to guess, OK? So start with 10. If you don't see the hump, then make it 100. And if you still don't see the hump, make it 1,000. And just keep increasing it by factors of 10. You want to see the hump right there. Are we seeing the hump? What did you have to make y max? 10? 100. 100. OK, so if you make y max 100, you see the hump. And calculate the maximum point, just like I taught you yesterday. TI people, second calculate max. Left bond, right bond, guess. TI, I mean, Casio people, just press G solve, max, and boom. So what are the coordinates of this maximum point right here? 1.585, comma, 66.148. Yeah, I trust you. And then you answer the question. The question says, how big a square should be cut from the corners? Well, 1.585 by 1.585, right? OK, what if the question was, what, what, what is the volume of the largest possible box that you can make? 66. Then the answer would be 66.148. So you've got to answer the question. OK, that was the appetizer. That was number one. That was easy. OK, I, I think we only have time to do three problems. OK, so I, I'm just going to pick them. Let's do number five. Okay. Oh, I give you a picture. All right. Oh, this is too easy. You know, you guys do number five. Okay. So how about how about how? Okay. Let's do number four. A cylinder is generated by revolving a rectangle with perimeter twelve about one of its sides. Okay. Let's say you have a rectangle. If I revolve it about one of its sides like this, what shape are you going to get? You're going to get a cylinder, like that. It's a three-dimensional thing, OK? X represents the radius of the cylinder. Write the volume of the cylinder as a function of x, then find the maximum volume of the cylinder. So same kind of thing. We want to write a function that represents the volume of the cylinder. Now, before we even start these problems, can I assume we know our volumes and surface areas of all the shapes yeah. in geometry? Because I remember every year we had a review. So shall we do a review right now? Because I, I assume you know them. Cylinder, cone, and sphere. Everybody know the volume and surface area for each one? OK, suppose this is the radius and height. Of, so what's the volume? Pi r squared h. Pi r squared h. That's given in the SAT directions, right? What about the surface area? You gotta be joking me! Two pi r h. Too late. Look, if you have a cylinder, look. If you unfold it, look, it's just a, it's just a rectangle. Didn't they teach you this in geometry? Look. The surface area of is simply the area of this rectangle. What's the length of the rectangle going to be? The, uh, so the circumference, circumference, which is 2 pi r times the height. Come on, people. Geometry taught you that you don't have to memorize formulas. You can figure it out, right? Oh, boy. What about a cone? If this is r and this is h, the volume of a cone is simply one third, one -third of that, right? Everybody remember that? Because your teacher showed you it takes three of these to fill up that, the shave ice cup. Did your geometry teacher get the shave ice cup, fill it three times with ice, I mean rice, and then pour it in? Mr. Masanade likes to use the yellow water, right? The urine. <laughs> Who had Mr. Masanade? Didn't he use the yellow water? <clears throat> Who had Mr. Masanade? Wait, White. I have a question. Yeah. Um, does this cylinder have you don't have to worry about the top and bottom of the surface area. A 
cylinder does not have a top and a bottom. This is a cylinder. There's no inside, there's no top and a bottom. You're thinking of a cylindrical solid. This is a cylinder. Anyway, if it had a top and a bottom, that's called a can. <laughs> what, what am I dealing with here? Anyway, volume of this is one third of that. You guys, you guys remember that? Like, okay. What about the area, surface area? And again, Pi RL. it doesn't co contain the bottom. There is no bottom, though. It's just the shave ice cup part. Pi R H. So which is it? It's pi r l. And what is l? Of what? This. What is this called? From geometry. That's called the slant height. Oh, okay. What? Oh, God. <laughs> What's going on? That release pressure. Here's the radius of a sphere. What's the volume of a sphere? Root three. Four thirds. What? Root three. Four thirds. It's four thirds pi r cubed, whereas the surface area would be four pi r squared. Four pi r squared. From this day forward, I assume everybody knows this. How are we gonna watch videos? We have to table it for tomorrow's video. No, we need to watch. We're gonna watch it. Too bad, even if we have to go over any two questions. Okay, so what is what is the volume of a cone? I mean, this is not a cone, a cylinder. Pi times the radius squared times the height. Now look at this picture. What is the radius of this cone? X. X. What is the height? Now, the only other information given is that the perimeter of the rectangle is? Are you guys reading the thing? It's 12. So if this is X, how do I label this if the perimeter is 12? Can you guys just look at it and go 6 minus x? This is honors, people. OK, we can't do it. So I have to teach you the box method then. OK, so we, we can't do that in our head. So let's put, let's call it box. Well, if the perimeter of this rectangle is 12, what equation can I write? 2x, 2x plus, plus 2 box, two box equals 12. Divide by 2. X plus box equals 6. Therefore, box equals 6 minus, six minus x. x. So if you can't do it in your head, do the box technique. I thought you guys were trained in Algebra 1 to do this. In Algebra 2. Whatever, I don't care. Just do it. I don't care how you do it, you got to do it. So look at this picture. What is the height? 6 minus x. Okay, I'll just do that part for you. So, what is the domain of this problem? X obviously has to be zero. bigger than zero, because you can have negative. X represents a length, but it has to be smaller than six. Y. Because otherwise, if you plug in a number bigger than six, then this is going to be negative, right? So, when you graph this on your calculator, you make X min zero, X max six, Y min zero, and Y max, you got to guess, 10. If you don't see the hump, then go to 100. If you don't see the hump, go to 1,000. Okay, let's just set up one of the problems then. Because that's the hardest part, setting it up. What time is it? Okay, six, seven, or eight. Six, seven, or eight. Six, six seven, okay, let's do six. So I've got to do one, four, and six in each class. A cylinder is inscribed in a sphere of radius five. Can you imagine that? Inscribe a cylinder in here. Cylinder inscribed like that now this lot how many ways are there putting a, a putting inscribing a cylinder in a sphere infinitely. yeah infinitely many right because you could make like a, a long thin one like a straw right or you could make a like a like something like that but the height is very small like a poker chip if you know what I'm talking about but then this volume and this volume are not going to be very big how do I make it so that the volume is a maximum? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so what does it say to do? X represents the distance between the center of the sphere and the base of the cylinder. 
So x is here. This is x. Woo! So write the volume of the cylinder as a function of x, because we want to maximize the volume. Now, what is the formula for volume of a cylinder? Pi times the radius squared times the height. Now, this is the radius of the cylinder right there. I need to somehow write that as a function of x. That's why he did all this practice last year. So you'll be good at this this year. And then by next year, when you take calculus, you just pounce <coughs> on it. You pounce on it like a wounded deer. The only other information given here is the radius of the sphere is 5. Okay, let me ask you this. How do I draw in the radius of the sphere to help me solve this problem? Where do I draw it? Draw it right there. You know why? Because now you have a right triangle. That means you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, can you guys just look at this and go, this is the square root of 25 minus x squared? Or do we have to use the box method? You can do it? Box method. Okay, Morisada. Okay, look, that's okay, you can't do it, that's fine. Just don't tell your geometry or your algebra 2 teacher. Call this box. Use the Pythagorean theorem. Box squared plus x squared equals 5 squared. Box squared equals 25 minus x squared. Therefore, box equals 20 square root of 25 minus x squared. Whatever it takes, just get the job done. Okay, look at this picture. What is the radius of this cylinder? Quick. What is the radius? Five. Square root of 25 minus x squared. You know what a common mistake on the quiz? Well, you're not going to have it done this one, but they forget to put the square root. Okay, now look at this picture. What is the height of the cylinder? 2x. So if you simplify this, you get volume is 2 pi x times 25 minus x squared. There you go. And what a surprise, it's a cubic equation. It's a cubic function. They're all going to be cubic functions. Because volume, right? Oh boy. Okay, so when you graph this on your calculator, again, what should you make x min and x max? Okay, this one's always going to be zero because you cannot have negative length. But what is the biggest x can be in this problem? Five. Five. X cannot be bigger than five, otherwise you're going to get a negative number under the radical. Anyway, in a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always the biggest side, right? So x cannot be bigger than 5. So make this x min, x max, and then y min, 0, y max, 10. If you don't see the hump, it go 100 and so forth. But again, what you want to see on your screen is the hump, and then you calculate the maximum point. That's what you're going to be doing for all of these. OK, I did three of them for you, so I guess you got to do 5. So we do 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 8. Yeah, the ones that we didn't do. Can't get anything by you today, Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm telling you right now, the hardest part is to write the function. Because I think everybody can graph it under calculator and find the hump, right? Oh, I, I don't know. You know what? Oh, whatever. Okay, what time is it? Okay, I don't even know how long the video is. This is from the Park Family Collection. Okay, we'll see. If you want. Anyway, when this building was first built, 2003, the first year we moved in, we called, we had a homecoming assembly. It was right over there, right out there. It was called Under Construction. That was the theme of homecoming. Day. Under <laughs> Construction. Anyway, so on the Wednesday assembly, the teachers put on a show for the students, kind of like faculty colleagues. So this is what the Park family did. Yeah, the Park family. Hey, what happened? Did I turn it on? There it is. Okay, how do you start this thing? Oh, my wife is videotaping it. She's terrible. She will see it. Oh, <laughs> 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 
proceed with the theme of the coming, which is construction. After construction, we like to perform three Japanese songs. <laughs> Playing the part of the evil monster, Jason. Oh my gosh, this video is terrible. <laughs> oh, did I forget to turn this off? Is it still going? Oh my god.